do is introduce ourselves to yep. the audience tonight. Yep. Welcome everyone to uh, our meeting, our Board of Selectmen meeting here in Milton and our Selectmen here for Lebanon, uh, May 22nd. If I could have everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is just we'll introduce ourselves so that everybody here knows who's, who's who tonight. Um, and of course the purpose of this workshop is for the Department, New Hampshire Department of Transportation to show us the concept drawings for the bridge replacement as it shows up here, that's formerly the Townhouse Road Bridge over Northeast Pond. So we we'll start from my left, starting with Chris. Chris Jacobs, I'm the town administrator. Yeah. Thank you. Andy, Andy Rawson, uh, Board of Selectmen. Yes, I'm Humphrey Williams. I'm the chair of the select board here. And Claudine Burnham, vice chair. Vice chair. And Chip Harlow's uh, Lebanon selectman. And Bruce as our town planner, if, you know, Bruce Woodruff. Yep. Uh, if you haven't signed in, um, Amy is our secretary. She'll be taking the notes from this meeting, and she'll use that sign-in register to get all the names. So basically what we're going to do tonight is we're going to go through the concept drawing. This is not, I mean, this is a public meeting and, and everything else, but the intent behind this was the presentation to the two boards. Um, and for any of our questions and comments, there is going to be an additional public hearing in about two to three months after we go through some of this, these issues that may, may arise from this. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you guys to start your presentation, please. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us. Um, as you know, we're here to discuss the uh, bridge replacement of Townhouse Road over Northeast Pond. Um, this project was brought to the state through the towns for replacement uh, through as an off-system bridge. It's not its own by the two towns, Milton and Lebanon. So the state of New Hampshire and the state of Maine are involved um, because it's an interstate bridge between the two. So we're here. Um, Actually, yeah, you got it, Nick. Thanks. That might help. All right. How's that? Is that? Yeah, if you just lift it up, it's on. There we go. All right. Thanks. So again, we're, we're here to discuss the this bridge replacement that was brought to the state for replacement. Um, this is a locally owned bridge, so it's managed a little bit differently than a normal state-owned bridge in that we're here working for the two towns to assist through the process, especially where it's interstate. Um, yeah, okay. Um, again, my name is Matt Lampron. I'm the project manager for New Hampshire DOT. With me here tonight, we have Ron Kleiner. He's really our bridge project lead. Um, Kevin Eaton from the state of Maine. He's uh, our counterpart. They pulled the other the state of Maine portion of what we're doing here. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Martin is our DOT environmental manager. She's not here tonight, but she is going to be working through all of our environmental permitting and what we need to make sure we do properly. We have Nick Karen from HDR uh, and Audrey Bola from HDR. Um, they're going to be providing the technical presentation, and I'll be here throughout and at the end for questions. I'm going to turn it over to Ron to go over the LPA process a little bit to kind of expand upon what I was saying about it being a municipally owned bridge in the process so that everybody understands their roles and responsibilities and what know what we can do and how we can do it. So, Ron? All right, so as Matt mentioned, um, this is a, a project that was brought to the DOT through the towns because municipally uh, owned a bridge on either side of the, of the river. Um, so it's coming through our LPA process, but it's just a department managed aspect of that. Um, so on the screen, we're kind of showing the general process of a Local project administrative project. Um, we're at the beginning, the engineering study phase where we're collecting data, we're getting criteria, um, we're developing some alternatives, 
which is what we're here today to kind of discuss or show you some of the alternatives that, that have come up. Uh, as we go through, slightly different than a regular LPA project um, because we're man DO New Hampshire DOT is managing the, the project itself. We'll be dealing directly with the consultant, HDR, Nick and Audrey. Um, they'll be submitting reports and plans to us. So we're going to do that first one, which shows that DOT is going to look at an engineering study. Uh, we'll review this report. We'll then give it to the towns and the state of Maine um, to kind of get their concurrence uh, before we move on to the next stage of the design. So every step along the way, the consultant will be presenting in New Hampshire DOT with a report or a set of plans. And we'll look them over and then share them with the towns for a comment uh, as we go along. Uh, other than that, it's, it's pretty much a standard project process going through uh, um, the design process. And now I'll give you Nick to take you through the actual technical proposal. All right, thanks, Ron. Um, so as most of you know in this room, pretty pretty aware of where the bridge is. Uh, Milton is on the New Hampshire side. The Lebanon is on the main side. I uh, think the next one's a little close up of that. Um, this aerial image was taken when the bridge uh, has been removed right now. So the goal of the project is to connect Townhouse Road and New Bridge Road um, uh, for that vehicular connection. So the purpose is to provide a safe, reliable, structurally sound crossing over Northeast Pond and to connect the two communities of Lebanon and Milton. Um, and maintaining as much vertical clearance underneath that bridge as we can. So the need is that the pre-existing bridge was previously removed um, due to its condition <coughs> and the existing detour that's in place now is just, I believe, find your way around going south around the end of Northeast Pond. It's about six miles long. Uh, so the details on the pre-existing bridge, it's jointly owned between Milton and Lebanon. It was constructed in 1947. Um, it was closed in 2010 because of the bridge condition. The deck and superstructure uh, portion of the bridge was removed in 2013, and the piers that were in the water of Northeast Pond were removed two years after that. Uh, the existing structure was a timber beam stringer structure on timber piles and timber abutments, and the abutments still remain. That superstructure depth for that uh, from the riding surface to the low cord, the underside of the bridge, that would be your upper bound for your clearance underneath, was 20 inches. So it's a pretty thin structure that was in place at the time. Um, uh, could, could you hold, you're saying from the top, from the surface of the water from the to the base of the bridge was 20 inches? No, from the riding surface uh, that cars would take on top of the bridge oh. to the underside. Oh, of the, the underside of the bridge. Okay, right. Right, thank you. I misunderstood your comment. Yep. Okay. Uh, so the overall span of the bridge from abutment to abutment is around, was around 94 feet, and the out-to-out -out width uh, for the bridge rail-to-rail -rail that was accessible to vehicles and pedestrians uh, was 24 feet. So the original um, had four spans, so you had three piers in the water, and the original clearance, uh, best that we could tell, was five, five and a half feet over the full lake elevation. Um, and that's controlled down the dam at the southern end of the water system. So these uh, look a little small, but we can make the presentation available. These are the existing details of the structure. Um, this top one's a section view, as if you were driving down across the bridge, and that uh, 20 inches is from that riding surface right there down to the bottom of the timber stringers. And from here down is where vessel boat traffic could traverse underneath the structure. Uh, the other view we have here is the elevation view, and it's again showing that four span uh, configuration that was in place. These plans were, as I said, from 1947, so they didn't have a datum that went with them. It was just a project datum. <coughs> they set 100 feet and went up and down from there. So based on the survey information that was collected for this project, we were able to convert uh, you know, this water elevation and the elevations at the abutments to you know, real computable numbers that we can use today. We've got a couple pictures here of what's left of the bridge. Um, you know, the main side with the marina on the left here taken from the New Hampshire abutment, and then conversely, the New Hampshire abutment, uh, abutment 
taken uh, from the main side. A little bit of existing roadway approach information. Um, there's rural local roadways. It has a 10 foot wide lane with a one foot shoulder as a typical section. Uh, the posted speed limit is 30 miles per hour and it saw about 620 vehicles per day and those were numbers back from 2008. So and that was when you did have that connectivity between Maine and New Hampshire at that time. And then this is a list of the alternatives that we were tasked with taking a look at. Um, we kind of broke them into three categories. So the first was matching the pre-existing roadway grades. So basically matching that top line, that top riding surface, as if the bridge was there today. And we looked at two alternatives for that one. Both were single spans. One was a steel girder option, which is what you typically see if you go you know, on 125 underneath 16 over there. I believe that's a, that's a steel girder bridge. Um, and then the other option is a pony truss where you have less of the superstructure below the riding surface and you have that truss that you're driving through. So that helps get the load carrying members up um, from underneath the road as much as possible and help increase clearance underneath it. Uh, the other category was match the pre-existing underclearance and we again looked at a pony truss. Um, we looked at a four span girder option, uh, similar configuration to the existing bridge and then alternative five was a single span girder um, that would provide the clearance that was there when the bridge was taken down. And then lastly, um, there was an increase of clearance to seven foot six, and that, you know, we look at that with a four span girder system. Uh, that clearance was requested by Milton for police boat clearance, and the, uh, the four span arrangement there just helps us thin up that superstructure depth from the riding surface on the road to the underside of the, the beams to try and limit the impacts of the roadway approaches. So I think with that, we, uh, okay, we have a little bit of details of each um, superstructure type. So as I was talking about the girder option, it's gonna be, would be a concrete deck and steel stringers uh, <coughs> underneath there to support that concrete deck. Uh, it'd have brush curbs and some taller railing. You know there's probably some pedestrians that transverse that bridge and we wanna provide some protection for them as well. Uh, elevation view conceptually uh, with the girder option, it's rather, it's a rather thick superstructure, so your clearance underneath the bridge is restricted quite a bit with this option. Um, the other option that we have some figures for is the pony truss. So as I said earlier, the roadway more or less drives through the supporting structure elements and this distance from the roadway riding surface down to the bottom of the, uh, the trusses has been minimized and that's the advantage you get with this structure type. Um, you can see down here that the clearance below the uh, pony truss is a bit more than the girder uh, configuration. All right, with that, uh, we have some roadway alternatives, which Audrey, you can help us speak to. Thanks, Nick. Can you hear me? Um, so I'm just gonna kind of go through a little bit more detail the alternatives that Nick just described. Um, so alternative one is this is single span girder. Um, and like you said, we have three different sections. One of them was matching existing roadway grades. So we look at two alternatives that match, it, match the existing roadway grades. This is uh, the girder, so bigger superstructure depth, five foot uh, for those beams. And with the current full lake elevation that we used for comparison, we end up with a clearance about one foot, one inch. Um, maintaining the existing roadway grades. Yep, the next one. So the second alternative um, also match the existing roadway grades. And this is, there's a profile underneath here and we do have some handouts that we can hand out to you after that, that show this a little bit better. You can look at it a little better. And with this one, again, pony truss, as Nick mentioned, the superstructure is a little bit less. So three foot one inches over that five foot. So you gain two feet of clearance under the bridge there. So you have about a three foot clearance. 
um, when you look at the, with this option, matching existing roadway grades. Uh, and the reason we looked at the matching existing roadway grades option is to try and limit the impacts around the abutting properties and marina and driveways and things like that because you don't have a lot of room next to the roadway between the houses uh, and the roadway and so we want to make sure we're not raising the road too much that we're pushing everything into other properties or having to impact other properties. So that's why we looked at the match existing roadway grade option. Uh, so this is um, kind of a color plan of it. And as you can see, there's a couple color plans on the side. This is the one uh, on the right here. And we can move them up to the center of the room and we can look at them and answer questions more specifically on them later. But this kind of shows approximate impacts for that alternative one and two, the match existing roadway. Um, so as you can see, the, the yellow is the proposed roadway width. Um, the green, the lighter green is would be proposed slope impacts, which would be temporary, um, which would be kind of grassed over after. Um, the orange, if you can tell the orange is the driveway matches, so there's a little bit of driveway work with each alternative uh, just to tie into the new roadway. Um, and then the red is the existing buildings. Um, so the next thing we look at is match pre-existing clearances. Uh, and what that means is matching what we measure as the clearance beneath the bridge today. And I know kind of out last fall, you guys went out um, and got a clearance about five and a half feet through there. Um, so that's where the match clearance five and a half feet from. Um, and then what can we do to the roadway what does the roadway elevation have to be to get that clearance? With with the we did two different bridge types, the morning truss and the um, and the girder. So here's the profile. And you can see on this profile that the road's raised up a bit, um, and the reason for the roadway needing to be rose up so much away from the bridge is you can't just come down and do a big sag curve because um, site <coughs> distance concerns. You need to have a certain Headlight sight distance, or you, or you have concerns with that. Um, so we're trying to meet design criteria uh, for the roadway uh, and the speed of the road. So to meet those criteria, we had to raise up the curves leading into the bridge, and that's why the roadway gets raised up into the bridge. What is the design speed? Thirty. The posted speed. Um, so with this, I kind of we kind of pick two. Kind of focal points, one in Maine and one in New Hampshire. Uh, the bolt ramp kind of on the main side. Um, so that causes about a almost a three and a half foot raise in front of the, the bolt ramp driveway. And on the New Hampshire side, there's that first house on the south side um, where there's a driveway and a house right next to the road and it can cause about a nine inch raise in front of that property. Um, so this is the pony truck single span for alternative three. If you want to go to the next one. We didn't look at the a single span girder here um, because that would raise it even more. Um, we looked at a four span, which is um, this is a different profile. It looks almost the same as the last profile, and in the handouts you'll see the difference in the different in the two different alternatives. But both alternatives, this one doesn't raise this one raises the bridge more than the pony truss. But at the driveway and the bolt ramp, it's about the same because you're still trying to meet that design criteria. On the vertical first. The existing roadway doesn't meet current design criteria. Um, and to keep that, you would need design exceptions um, from Federal Highway and DOT. Um, so again, with this one, nine inch raise in front of the New Hampshire driveway and three foot raise in front of the boat ramp. Um, if you go to the next slide, this is kind of the other color plan which shows what those impacts would look like. And as you can see, um, the light green is a little bit significant more significant impacts for the slope limits, and it requires kind of reconstruction of that boat ramp on the main side, the boat launch. Um, there is an office building on that side, um, which would need to be shifted. Um, it's a gas tank. Okay. Um, but shifting the boat launch like that a little bit to the north, or the west, east a little bit, um, maintains the same grades of the boat, approximate same grades as the boat ramp today which has a little bit of a flat panel and then it gets a little steeper as you get into the water. So we tried to mimic those grades. Didn't want to make anything any worse. <coughs> then we 
looked at uh, alternative five, the single span girder, and like I said, I didn't, we didn't do a profile for that um, because the, the impacts would imagine just would be more, worse than that one I just showed you. Um, if this is something that we push forward, then we would look into that further. Um, but with the five foot superstructure depth and the five and a half foot clearance, you've got a pretty significant radius of the road to try and meet criteria, design criteria. And alternative six, so that's with the five and a half foot clearance. To get the, uh, as requested by Milton um, Police, to get the clearance of the boat, seven foot six inches, you're raising even higher than that. Um, so picture that one and then a little bit further. Um, about two extra feet. I, I mean, I'm not gonna say the roads are raised two extra feet, but it might, exponentially, it might be a little bit less, but you still got a more significant raise. And you're, now you're looking at um, likely acquiring properties to make something like that work. <coughs> uh, go on to the next one. So this, that was a lot of stuff. Uh, so this kind of summarizes it up a little bit. Um, the alternatives on the left, the original at the top, the pre-existing bridge, and then the number of spans, the type of structure, and then the clearance um, that you're getting for the options. Next slide. This is hard to read. We have a handout for this, which we will pass out as well. Um, but this basically summarizes along across the top, it's all six alternatives. Um, and the along the left side, it's different criteria. Um, what's the... Uh, at the driveways and, and the boat ramp, what, what happens at each, like basically the stuff that was on the slides just in a more of a table format. Um, what are the impacts to the right of way? What are the impacts? Um, what kind of design exceptions are required? Um, with the roadway not meeting certain criteria? And um, any cost implications that these different options might have above and beyond a baseline cost of just putting the bridge back, matching existing grade. So you'll see the cost implication that's above and beyond matching existing grades. Uh, traffic control, pretty straightforward. Bridge is closed today, closed through construction, uh, maintaining existing detour in place. I will turn it back over to Nick to go a little bit more detail about environmental. Thanks, Audrey. So. Um, just got a single slide on the natural and cultural resources component at this point. Um, once we get a direction on which way this project wants to go and how big our impacts are leading up to the bridge, that'll help kind of bring some of this into clarity too. But some of the things we've identified so far are, uh, you know, we're gonna need a wetland permit both from New Hampshire and Maine um, for any work that is in and around Northeast Pond. You know, if some of those alternatives that um, increase the roadway height quite a bit, you know, you could have more wetland impacts in the Northeast Pond just to chase the roadway approaches up, up to the bridge. Um, the thing we also found, the bridge isn't eligible, or at least I hope it wasn't eligible for the National Register because it's not there anymore. Um, we're reviewing historic resources in accordance with Section 108. You know, these things are uh, processes we have to go to as far uh, to to uh, get through the NEPA process, one of the federal um, requirements for the project. Uh, and then species that we want to take a look at when we're out there is the northern long-eared bat and the small world begonia um, that may be present um, from, from data hits on the uh, natural, New Hampshire Natural Heritage Bureau website. Uh, so this is an approximate project schedule that we're looking at moving forward. So as Ron said earlier, we are in the engineering study phase right now. Um, we're targeting to present at a public information meeting this summer in uh, you know, two to three months. And then after that, we'll select a preferred alternative and develop prelim preliminary plans, which will be done this fall into the winter. And then from those, um, we'll probably hold a public hearing to speak on the project um, in the effect, the impacts that the preferred alternative will have. And then after a public hearing, we'd move uh, through final design next uh, summer and fall. And then the project is tentatively advertised, scheduled to bid in March 2025, I think. So that's what we have uh, right now for a schedule. So 
one of the reasons we're here too is to solicit input from the both select boards um, on you know their thoughts on the clearance, the uh, the boat launch impacts, and then more or less direction on what uh, what the boards are feeling we should uh, we should be pursuing further. So with that, I think we'll uh, open it up now. So that that was a lot of stuff in 15 minutes, which is fine. Um, so to get where we need to be with the police, because that's very important, they need to get through. Right. Um, what what do you think would be your best? What do you think would be the best alternative for for what you just out of all those um, suggestions of 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 uh, sure. So. The police boat, we understand it's seven foot six to the top of the, the white mast. Um, and the only alternative we've looked at that is gonna minimize your impacts leading up to the bridge would be a multi-span structure, um, probably that girder structure that's gonna narrow that, um, steel girder structure that's gonna narrow your superstructure depth down. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna help you get up off the water, but also limit your raise in the profile um, leading up to the bridge. But I mean, with that, as Audrey spoke, um, the impact graphics that we have are, uh, you know, it doesn't show that alternative. So the, that alternative that shows more impacts, especially at the boat ramp, mm -hmm. that doesn't accommodate the seven foot six raise. So as she said, you'd be looking to pick the road up probably another two feet. So if you're up three feet at the boat ramp already, would probably be somewhere around <coughs> the foot rate and raise in that roadway to, to come up to the bridge because you've got to taper it up at a rate that's comfortable for driving and safe for driving as well. Mm. So well, if you're looking strictly at clearance for the police boat, it would be that type of structure, but then that also has the implications land side leading up to the bridge. Yeah. Okay, that's going to have to give us some serious thought. Right. No? Right. By the way, for those of you who were not here, the Mother's Day flood in 06, the water was three feet deep over both roadways. Mm. And the first two houses, the marina being one, the million dollar house being the other, the cellar was full of water. So the space under the bridge and between the bays was not great enough to allow passage of water. It acted like a dam and raised it up. So that has to be a, a condition. Either you meet it all the way or part way, but it's got to be a consideration. Yeah, we have a uh, hydraulic steam working on this project as well that are looking into historic events like that to see what the water level has done in the past and what, how it would react in the future with these alternatives that we're also providing. So it's not, uh, that's not lost on our design team. Good, good. Um, for right now, I want to make sure that we limit the questions to anything from Lebanon. Paul, thank you for coming in. I see that you're here. Um, thank you. Andy, you got any other questions on that? No, I mean, of course, you know, this is, you know, something that I certainly think about all the time, but, you know, I think when we lost 16, you know, um, you know, this is getting away from a little bit about talking about, about the bridge, but when we lost 16, it really, it really hurt Milton, and it really, um, you know, we're, we're kind of a, a little poor community here, and um, so, I mean, getting this bridge back open is, is, you know, something that hopefully, you know, uh, will will take place. Um, you know, we have the economical part of it, um, where uh, you know we, we can get to both sides, and then you know, of course, it's a safety piece. Um, you know, with that bridge being gone, we all know we're, we we all live around here. Um, it's it's really uh, it, it's it's kind of dangerous not not being there. So those are kind of kind of couple of things that um, that I always think about and um, you know hopefully we can all come up with 
you know, a design that's going to work best for the town and um, best for the uh, for the people that are going to be voting under it. Um, but we we really got to, you know, come up with something that's going to just work for everybody and not, uh, you know, can't be bickering over this. We got to get it done. So um, hopefully we can figure it out as a team here and of course as a community. So that's where I'm at. Paul, you got anything you want to, or Chip? The, uh, the four span five foot six clearance option, I believe you said we have the marina, but we're going to still be moved. Yep. Is, that, is that correct? Yep. And then who incurs that cost? Is that cost to do that part of the project? Or is that the landowner that has to incur that cost to move that ramp? Matt, handle that one. So uh, all costs to construct the bridge would be borne by the communities. So if we had to buy this house and buy out the marina or any of that work, that's part of constructing the bridge. Was that, all part of the so project. that's part of the project. And that's one of the biggest concerns with um, some of these more uh, raised options is that we can build we can build anything to satisfy the needs of, of, of the waterway passage. The, the implications are, as Nick noted, even with the match existing clearance, which doesn't raise it another couple feet for the police boat, we're already looking at relocating a fuel tank and raising the roadway by three feet and relocating the boat ramp, and none of that is in the current budget. So that is gonna be an increase in budget just for the road work, not for the bridge. And so when we look at the four span alternative, which would satisfy the boat clearance. Every span that you add adds another structural component, and unfortunately, those three structural components are in the waterway. So now you've got coffer dams and excavations and dewatering, and that's another budget increase. So I guess part of the input that we need is really what the two towns can support financially to move forward with any option that is not maintaining existing clearance and what kind of impacts are well, willing hey, Matt, to be before you go with and talk about the existing clearance yeah. you're talking about at the abutments right now that existing clearance the road clear you know where the road grade comes in that's the clearance you're talking about that's the existing clearance which is about three feet that's what you isn't that what you're referring to so this, the three options on the table, right, are to replace the bridge matching existing roadway. Right, and that that's what I'm saying. That's about a three-foot clearance, which doesn't satisfy that any boaters. The second so. alternative is to match the five-and-a-half-foot, five-foot-six clearance. Yep. But that impacts all the additional roadway work. The marinas are heavily invested in, in relocation efforts. And the three-foot raid, that's all additional monies. So then we look at the four span. That increases your all your roadway work by another two feet in select materials. We don't we haven't studied what the impact on the marina is, but that's something to be considered. And this house, this first house, <coughs> yeah, that's already mm -hmm. eight inches with that one. That's very close to the road. So that that could be a, another issue. So we just want to do what the towns and the, the, the public wants, but really it's 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 uh, based on what the town and the public su supports. I think well, from mine, and then I'm going to turn my question on this, which is awfully hard. I mean, obviously we want to be able to meet the needs for the police boat and that too, for emergency services and other things. I mean, we've been living without this bridge now for a number of years. The original bridge you could get boats under. I mean, it wasn't that it was perfect clearance, but as it is, it doesn't meet today's standards. Back then, it was a little more clearance than what we were initially talking about here. We can't take away from that, especially a new business over there and everything else, because that devalues property on the lake. But what we don't know is, what's the added cost? And without understanding what the projected additional costs are gonna be, it's awfully hard to say, let's go this way, you know? Right. And we, we, we certainly aren't expecting to walk away with, with all of those answers, nope. but what we are expecting is that you have a, a good frame of reference of, of where we're at, and you can take some time 
collectively the you know and I think Maine Devin's got some things to say too when it gets down to it as far as what the two state agencies have in their more bridge budget uh, mm -hmm. I know I can check on what we have um, but what Maine has for that particular category of municipal aid bridge money we have to check those budgets at both states to see what we can what what can be born additionally because of the uh, the state match is the plan to have those projected costs for the public meeting here this summer absolutely we we need to get direction we can't come to necessarily with, with all these alternatives what we want to come to is these alternatives that the, the boards have chosen and vetted we certainly can't come to to public information with a, an option that the town can't afford because that doesn't serve the town right you have to where it's a municipally owned bridge we have to take you a lead you tell us what to do and we'll, we'll do it to the best of our ability but we have to have a budget who bears the cost of the fact that the project has been delayed and so therefore costs have risen because of inflation so they're a lot higher than what they would have been if they hadn't been delayed for, for as long as it has been who bears that cost if you give me a price now if this had been not been delayed as, as it has been the cost would have been a lot less so how does where does the states come into, into play with that versus the municipalities because we certainly haven't been the one that have, have been delayed the project cost is at the time of bid, so it's it's shared e not equally because obviously the uh, it's an 80-20 split, so the, the state's paying 80%, right? So 20% of that cost increase due to inflation is part of the project. Yeah, of course. 80-20 for me, so yeah. I have a question. Chris? Yeah. <coughs> Done. Oh, go ahead. All right. So, um, <clears throat> to be honest with you, as an engineer, from my perspective, like alternative one and alternative two, where it says matches program assumptions, is. Somebody wasn't really aware or awake when they put together the initial project assumptions. In other words, if anyone in any department, do you main DOT or New Hampshire DOT, thought that you were just going to get away with a concrete deck single span with no arch in it and drop girders down three feet, which is probably the cheapest thing to do, they were <coughs> totally totally mistaken. Okay. In other words, you know, having been in this genre before, you look at, okay, 24 foot width, uh, it's a 94 foot span. This big bridge costs $2,138,000. And that's how it's done. And yet, when you actually get around to doing it and looking at the actual, um, what you're dealing with, your original matches programmed assumptions, your assumptions are shown to be totally invalid. Case in point is, you guys were here a year ago, and we said, you know, there's always been five foot five. Somebody sent you a 2006 um, picture, showed the water right up there, and you said, oh no, we're designing this for two feet of clearance. That's all there is. And so, off of a flooding photo, the assumptions were made. So, what I'm getting back at is the New Hampshire and Maine DOTs are going to have to bear some of the increased costs because a junior engineer put these costs together and had no practical assumptions. Didn't even, I'm not even sure you even knew where the thing was going to be put. <coughs> so, um, that's done. Secondly, Everybody else, you know, other people look at, and I agree with you, you look at the economics. I look at the safety aspect of a bridge. If you were designing a bridge today, and someone said to you, I want to put my boat ramp right there on the approach side from Maine, would you let them? 
No, no, Matt. It's a, from a safety perspective, the answer is no. We don't allow driveways 75 feet within intersections. We don't put boat ramps on an approach where you're coming down on what is that, an 8 to 10% grade? You've got it posted as 25. Nobody does 25. Somebody's going to come barreling around that corner, and now that you want to raise that boat ramp three feet, or raise the grade three feet, when you back your boat in, you go to look in your mirrors, there's no boat. Because it's downhill. What's that going to be, about a 20% grade or a 15% grade on that boat ramp? It's probably 10 now. Well, it's, there's a seven foot platform today between the mix and the design, which is why the boat ramp needs to be shifted away from where it is. If we were to leave it in place and just raise the road, right, it would be 1%. That boat ramp needs to be eliminated and needs to be built mm -hmm. further north at the marina owner's expense because the road comes first it's not and that's just my opinion it's not the board's opinion that is a piss poor location for a boat ramp the other thing that's going to happen is if the boat ramp stays there when someone tries to pull their boat out and they're trying to use their <coughs> honda accord which some people will try and do they're going to find it doesn't have enough power to get out so what are you going to do you're going to gun it or you're going to lay some rubber trying to get that boat out of the water um if you know all you have to do is go look on youtube fail boat launches and and you'll find all the supporting data you ever want to see so you make a boat ramp that deep that steep that close to the bridge approach with that poor a sight distance we're all asking for trouble so it shouldn't proceed forward with that boat ramp in that location. Also, the gas pump should have been moved further away. I understand it's to get gas into the boats, but they, you know, you can put the storage tank further away, and you can um, you can do piping to get the fuel down to the boats. That can be done. The other thing that needs to be taken into consideration is when we um, put up the ramp, uh, put up the bridge. There needs to be a fence on either side because we have had documented people jumping off the bridge right into boats. We have, you know, kids, uh, just being kids, I guess, or not under parental supervision, jumping off the bridge at all hours of the day or night. And that has to stop along with us. If we allow that to, to be there, then we, we miss the boat. We, okay, we can get cars from either side, but we've created a really potential traffic hazard. And um, Lebanon doesn't have a standing police force. <coughs> Hilton does. We're going to be the ones that are always going to have to respond to those incidences. Um, so the, the, right off the bat, the one that I like is <coughs> either the minimum force van Gurner or the good. pony truss. But if we do the pony truss, it's an attractive nuisance. Those kids are going to be walking on. I did it. In Dover. My mother would have killed me to find out. But um, it's just an attractive nuisance. And, and so I know you wanted input. There, you got it. You got that. No, one is out, two is out, three okay, four okay. All because they have the five and a half foot of, uh, of clearance. But I can tell you, alternative three probably isn't the right <coughs> one because it's going to increase that boat ramp to three two. Sorry, four two. So I'm down to either alternative four or five. Six is not out. And that is balancing function against form, against cost, against the re need to have the required clearance. The other thing that I want to say is. Um, Maybe every 10 years we get a new police boat. Mm -hmm. Maybe we build, get in one that's not as tall, maybe wider, more leg room, seating room. Um, something, I, in other words, just because somebody on the lake has a tuna boat, mm -hmm. and I know nobody does, I don't think we should build a bridge around one tuna boat. Nothing. So, done. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to elaborate more to satisfy your 
inquiry about when the project was initiated. However, as a lot of you know, I'm the third person in line to, 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 to run the project. But I do know Matt, that... there's no sense in going back and rehash. Let's just move forward. Well, I, I just... was just no sense in rehashing. But the point is, there's never enough money, especially when... And especially conceptually back yep. then when it was, hey, can we have a bridge <coughs> moving forward? However, that's what we're here to do is to try and do what makes most sense. I, I wasn't wanting to say right off the bat about intersection drive distances. We all know that we have design standards for that, and you're, mm -hmm. you're correct. If someone wanted to put a driveway within so many feet of an intersection, we'd say no because of safety, which is... I'm sure the question's coming up in a lot of people's minds, well, why do we have to raise it three feet if it wasn't before? Safety. Your sight distance going up over the bridge, your sight distance coming around the corner, you're in a, a heavy sag curve, yep. so you get down there and you come back up. Anytime you can smooth those curves out, you get your sight distance. I mean, maybe, Audrey, would you have a more eloquent way to explain no, you're actually it? right, oh. and then and that, as that I was designing the flow map, I was thinking about sight distance, exactly what you said. Um, I don't have them printed out here, but yes. I have a point to raise. Nowhere here have I heard anybody mention anything about salt. Steel bridges are out for the salt that's being used <coughs> for the town of Milton and the state of Maine. That lake is oversalted already. If you look at that bike that's been in the water there, it's nothing but a rust bucket because the water in the lake is very alkaline due to the highway salt and the whole drainage system. So would it be wise to put up a steel structure? I don't think so. It has to be precast concrete with special additives for salt prevention. I think that's actually what they said. It was concrete, um, the spans, anyways, right? The spans you were talking about, the conc deck. concrete the deck, deck. But it's concrete steel, deck, but it's steel, steel girders. Elements. When you go to a pre craft pre cast, pre cast <laughs> member, um, it's like going to a steel girder, or just going like this. Yeah. So the reason that that's a, a, a pony truss with steel girders is because what is it, three foot from the top of your roadway to the bottom of that girder is three foot, compared to almost six feet with a standard girder, which would the same be if you used any type of precast box member. I don't know, do you wanna say anything? Yeah, so <coughs> Matt's right. I mean, when you get to get into concrete shapes, you know, they get heavier, they get deeper, they're not terribly efficient for this type of span. Um, but to your point, you know, they do fare a little bit better with salt. Um, but with steel structures, there are coatings are doing a lot of metalizing now. Yes. Where it's especially that close to the water. It's yeah, either gonna be painted or metalized. Metalizing, we've done a lot of those down on, on the seacoast and they've had quite success doing that. So that's definitely an option. Uh, when we get an alternative that we're gonna go with, if it's steel, then that would be an avenue we'd wanna definitely uh, explore. Right now we're getting the 16, Route 16 bridge over 75. You look at it. That's hey Ron. Ron, we got to try to bring this back for this for the board. I agree with your comments, but we just got to bring it back to let these guys know we're going flooding. You got comments? Yeah. So the um, I know I know we're looking at the additional height, and um, from my recollection, um, the safety aspect was because the police boat had an antenna, right? That in the past they would have to collapse it to go underneath. Mm -hmm. Is this? height allowing for that antenna to stay up I don't during know. the pass? I know Prouse is out there, Chief. I believe that's what the seven foot six the option seven foot is for. Six option the is five for six allowed it to cl be cleared they though, could, I believe. Right. With the antenna or yeah. with, with it the down? antenna down. I with the antenna five, down. And off. is that also a passable height for the majority of the boats? Yeah. The okay, five so six was a design six. feature originally because of what we were looking at for majority of the boats. Did you hear me? I was questioning about the antenna uh, on the boat um, so it's required. Not the antenna for the police. It's the top so of the boat. Or the, the light bar. top of the light bar? Yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. So the question I asked Chris was what alternative is, well, how do you 
have the least amount of impact for the other properties on there will still get us with a five foot six and is already budgeted by this by both states. Um, and if it's not going in until 2025 to 26, then Alternate. as a community, we can look at what a different option is for our police and emergency boat. Um, because it is used not only by the police department, but also by the fire department when we have to respond to um, emergencies out in the water, both for Milton and for Lebanon. When we have calls that come in for Lebanon, we get mutual aid calls by the fire department. Our boat is what usually responds because we have the biggest boat and the ability to do the most work out there. Um, if it is only going to be five foot six for clearance, and it's 25, 26, then we figure out what we have to do to make sure our boat, can, mm -hmm. whatever boat we do have, can get under that and respond to our emergencies and allow us to do what we need to do. You spend 50 grand on a new boat to save 200 grand on a bridge makes sense to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And to, to your point, the cost to go to a four span would far, far exceed that number. Those were fake numbers on the boat. No, but so, <laughs> no, but <laughs> when you're looking at move, when you're looking at just the earthwork and the and the, and the boat ramp and the, the fuel tank and all of those things, and the additional spans to get five foot six, we're a significant amount of money. The four but the four span, according to your thing here, you don't have to raise the grade. If you go to five six with a four span, you're not raising the grade as much as you would with a pony truss. Your pony truss raises at four feet, and this one raises at three feet. Correct. So the four span still gives you more clearance with less impact to the surrounding area. Correct. Mm. So more more structure costs. Right. You shift your your your, your, yeah. your uh, yeah. right away costs into construction costs. So that puts it in the option four range because even getting back to the chief's comment and both chiefs' comments in regards to the boat, um, you would be looking at <coughs> looking at companies in twenty twenty five. That doesn't mean that it would be started in twenty twenty five. You're looking at at least three years or more probably before the bridge would start. So when we say advertise in twenty five is when we put it on the street for people to take bids out. Right. Um, we give them a month to bid it and about 90 days for a governor and council to approve it. Um, and that's all, if, if that's if everything goes perfect yep. and we get all of our new agreements with new finances set together and go. So um, I'm here to, we're here to make no promise that that's the, the firm advertising of spring of 25, but that's our target. Yep. You know, if everything goes well and we get through, if we have to spend more money, we get through the agreements because there's four parties involved with Milton, Lebanon, Maine, and New Hampshire. Yep. But the cost, the associated cost for the four span girder, I mean, obviously, the groundwork would be less as far as how much you've got to raise it, but we need to have an understanding of what the costs are there. The increased cost. So these are conservative approaches where safety was used more than design exception for the vertical profiles and the angle points approaching the bridge mm -hmm. to, to make it safer for the, the, the through traffic traveling. Um, design exceptions to, to, I know people aren't going to drive 15 miles an hour. And I don't know if the Federal Highway doesn't always grant the design exception, but those grade changes can be less with lower designs. So that. I'm sorry, I was answering your question. Yes, I think we're going to Well, I'm just trying to get some, um, a better understanding. I told them that your grades were based on um, mean design criteria. Yeah. Mean design if criteria. If you have exception, then yes, it could be less. Our, our design budget doesn't accommodate for us to have these folks at the consultant go through all 400 iterations. So mm -hmm. that's kind of why we're here is to say, of these, do you have one, two, or three that you'd like to narrow that down to so that we can get more detailed information on? Like if there's any standout that, yeah, single span girders out because it's two feet, nix it. Yeah. So next, if you want to get back to us, Today, tomorrow, a week, two weeks to, to discuss it. On the single span? On any of them. Well, I, I think our town administrator was very clear about the reason why that's next. 
we're, we're certainly not going to go with a design that's going to keep it at about a foot or two above the water because that's just a no-go from the start. But before I continue, Bruce, you got something you want to bring up? Well, we I know you could talk for it, but yeah, specific. Well, there's probably three things that I want to talk about. One of them is a question about why the, why the 12 feet has to be pulled all the way back here so far from the approaches when it gives you four more feet if you retain the 10 foot wide lanes. We've got 12 foot going all the way back to here and we got 12 foot going all the way back to there. And I'm asking why. I, I think that's one of the things that you could, add, you could ask for a design exception. And why is that? It's because the whole road is 10, 20 feet wide. Why are we making it 24? And what it does is it pulls back it pulls back the effects on people's properties. And that opens up another thing that I really need to get off my chest. There's nothing wrong with asking for vertical design exceptions as well. And it's because, it's mainly because from time immemorial, everybody that used that road knew that there were boats coming in and out Nobody went really fast through there. And, and it's one of those things that you've got to know. If you don't know it, you shouldn't talk it. Eight years ago, I went to Concord and talked with David Scott and the engineer and laid out all of these issues eight years ago. Eight years ago. And that talks to what you said, Chris. Eight years of <coughs> waiting. My final point. Yep. This business about 80-20, and we've got to increase the 20%, read the municipal agreement mm -hmm. that you all signed. Mm -hmm. It put a cap on what that 20% meant. Yep. Plus 10 or 15 percent increases. If you don't renegotiate a municipal agreement, then the state, both states, will have to find some other money to make this work. But I'm saying th this is this is over-engineered. And the costs can come down. And the impacts to other people's properties can come down. And, and uh, I guess I'm going to say that, just like Chris did, there's no sense in rehashing that, but somebody has to say where this all started. This wasn't just, they never came out here, they didn't know what the bridge was like. I went to Concord, and I met with David Scott, and I know you all know who David Scott is. I know he's retired now. You know, COVID did you all, and there's been like three or four sets of engineers that have supposedly worked on this. And all I'm saying is, let's, let's look at this logically for what that road really is and what it's been and what it should continue to be and get the design exceptions and make it happen to bring the cost down. And, and, and in keeping with that note, and Matt, back to our meeting we had last fall, I don't even know why options one and two are even on this to this day. We stated point blank, it would not be acceptable to have anything less than what we had before for clearance on the water. So to even bring those in means you're spinning your wheels on a, on a plan that we never would have accepted in the first place. So we definitely need to be looking at something like the four span girder and, I, and Bruce is right, if you make that a 20 foot wide bridge instead of a 24 foot wide bridge, find out what the heck those, you know, what that's going to do as far as lessening the impact on the properties in that, so. Um, so, Devin Eaton with Maine DOT. Um, certainly understand um, the frustrations. I understand politics can be really frustrating. Um, I'm relatively new to this project as well. Just the last probably two years is when it's, you know, I've been the project manager for it. Um, I, I know that 
Um, when you see something that provides almost no vertical clearance over the water, it seems like we're not listening. I get that, I can see where um, that frustration can come from. We also need to provide baselines for our upper management to be able to compare things to. So when we show something that matches existing grades, it's a baseline. It's not to say that we're proposing that as the absolute low cost minimum that you guys should just swallow the tough pill and deal with. That's, that's not at all what this is. Um, it gives us a baseline to compare to for estimates and, and things like that going forward with um, you know, the assumptions that we're gonna make for what is actually put in place or the, the goal to put in place. We have to have something to start from. You're right, there is you know, a square foot cost or something that's applied based on just square foot area of you know, X long and X wide. Um, here's what this should cost. A lot of the times that is how it comes from planning and that frustrates us too. <laughs> um, but you know, understanding that we're, we're not trying to ignore you guys. We, we certainly understand that it's, it's a process. It can take a long time. It's more frustrating for you, absolutely you know, being here and dealing with the fact that there's no bridge there. Um, but I, I just wanted to clarify, um, you know, where that baseline and, and what the intention of it was. It, it wasn't to try to stomp down on anything and say this is how we think it should be. It, it had to be something for comparison purposes. Um, you know, some of the other comments, um, you know, I, we certainly understand. You know, it's, it's, it takes a long time with some of these municipal projects when um, you know they work in conjunction with the state and trying to balance budgets and you know cross state borders makes it that much tougher and drag on that much longer. So um, you know we're here to to make sure we're taking steps forward with you folks um, to uh, to keep things moving forward as best as we can. I know I've been in conversation with Lebanon a little bit here and there um, with New Hampshire leading, just trying to keep information being passed along, um, and and that's really the purpose of this is to to start from somewhere. Um, you know, there are state minimums, there's federal minimums, and then, you know, there's certainly local or municipal minimums um, for roadway widths to, um, to address the comment about that. Um, 24 is, is typically um, the state minimum in, in both states for a lot of cases, so that could be where that came from, um, just to, to try to show um, a general impact. A lot of folks are looking for more width. Um, so we tried to find that balance of, of showing what the property impacts would be versus what you can get for hydraulic clearances versus um, what you can do to improve safety of the curves coming into both sides. That's what makes it really tough here is the curves on both sides of the bridge. Um, understanding that vertical is really important um, from a clearance perspective, but those horizontal curves are really tough. The New Hampshire side, the houses are a foot away from the road. On the main side, you have that bolt launch, which you know, it is what it is, but it's there. You know, we're trying to deal with it. Hindsight being what it is, sure, but, um, you know, trying to address everything is tough. And, and we certainly understand that and don't want this to drag out longer than it needs to. Um, but just wanted to provide some clarification is that, you know, we're here because regardless of what's happened in the past, we do want this to move forward, but we do understand the frustrations and, and where those come from. So. Before you step back, Devin. One of the key things here, and I know we got a lot of people from a lot of the publics here tonight, I think that part of the frustration isn't just ours. Part of the frustration is the public has been waiting on this for so long, uh, and not to beat you guys up, but we thought we were going to get the concept drawing information back in February, and by now we would have been meeting publicly. We're still just getting the concept information, haven't even narrowed it down yet, and the public thing is now being pushed off to summer. So every little bit of delay isn't just us, it's, the, it's both communities. People want answers. People don't want to let, have less than what they have. So no matter what's got to be done, it's got to meet the needs of the people that are on the lake and it's got to meet the needs of those passing over that bridge. And I think it's pretty clear that not going to accept less than what we had before as far as the clearance goes. So. And in defense of the process is you know, when they work with the New Hampshire Wetlands Bureau and they yep. make an application, the Wetlands Bureau is going to take almost a fresh look at it and they're going to say, what other alternatives mm -hmm. can you look at? And that's the reason why yep. we have this many alternatives. Um, if they go back to the Federal Highway people and say, hey, we need a, a relaxation of this vertical curve and this road width and this speed, 
the Federal Highway people, again, they're going to look at it, it's like it's a fresh thing for them, and they're going to say, well, what other alternatives did you con consider? Um, and, and thus, the reason why we, we go through this exercise and this um, process of multiple meetings is one, to get everybody's, uh, to bring everybody up to speed, mm -hmm. but also to show when they do ask for some of these variances, that they met with the public, and this was a strong concern. They met with the two towns. This was a strong concern. So it's in a, the process has been set up um, over the years so that three people just didn't railroad a bridge through, a bridge mm -hmm. design through, and nobody was happy. Yep. And that's so in defense of this whole process. Yeah, absolutely. And Chip, you had a comment. You keep talking about baseline baseline being the grade, but why isn't the baseline the clearance to the water? Who makes that certain determination that we're going to say baseline is grade and not baseline is clearance? And that was a very generic term. I'm, I'm not trying to say that, you know, here's our starting point for every project, right? Well, Typically we would have a bridge that you would have as a match point, and so that's why we said, well, existing grades, knowing that, you know, the bridge was built forever ago, you know, it was a timber structure, which is very rare these days. So there was never a chance we could meet the same clearances at the same grade just because of what the previous structure didn't meet. It probably wouldn't have met a single design criteria that we have today because of the age that it was built at and the material that it was built from. So baseline was just meant to be a general term. I, I wasn't no, trying to. No, not, not, not <laughs> you, but it's more the point that we were being told right here today that whatever it, over baseline it is, we have to pick up that additional cost. And what I'm saying is, is that baseline to all of us is clearance. Mm -hmm. It's not great. So in order to get that, so that should be baseline, should be the clearance, because that's what, that's what's vital to, to, a, to a connecting waterway is, is clearance. Sure, and, and every project's different, you know. And it's that's exactly why we're here. Yeah, and, and wanting to, to find this information. Narrow those down so that we can tell you what those impacts are, what those costs are, and move forward, um, you can stay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like Devin said, a, a lot of this process, because of the curves, because of the, the intricacy of that, it did take a little bit longer to generate the alternatives because we went through a lot of different profiles and a lot of different scenarios in order to try and get more clearance. And that's why we have so many alternatives, because we really tried hard to find something that that met somewhere in the middle and this is the best we have for this level of engineering and we'd like to take it to the next step to, to find out what your baseline impacts and costs are and what your ultimate seven foot six, if that's what you decide to go with. So, and, um. I have a point for the gentleman down there in the pink shirt. The width <laughs> of the road in Lebanon and Maine the standard is a three rod road and the operational function of the road the private property, the town's property is 50 feet wide and all of the lots, the house lots have all been pinned for that. So nobody's going to lose any property. They may get some of their lawn plowed up a little bit but uh, they, can, they can move the road over almost 15 feet now and still be within that parameter. Thank you. Yeah, no, he's complete. Um, Bruce is completely right about the, the municipal agreements, which is one of the delays we had. It took us two plus years working through, you know, New uh, Hampshire Maine, went through both of our attorney general's office. We we're coming up with a good interstate agreement on top of the municipal. So. It doesn't normally take eight years long, but because of the additional agreements, it, it took a little extra time. Um, and those agreements, he's correct. Every phase has a 10% cap. So the engineering phase, if it goes o if it's gonna go over 10% of that engineering budget, we have to come back to the table to all three entities to, to address, which is another reason why um, we look at all, a lot of alternatives because they don't all meet those budgets. So we'll have to come back and, and discuss and work those agreements again. I mean, it seems like alternative four is, is, I 
mean, I'm not speaking for <coughs> these guys, but it seems like it's probably pretty much the closest, thing. the closest one to, you know, that would fit our needs and wants. Um, if we were to move forward with alternative four, um, and that would give you guys, a, you know, an idea of, um, you know, which way to go. I mean, it seems like it's, it's, you know, it's the less of the evil of all the properties we. Uh, uh, it just seems like it's the way to go. I mean, so if we move forward with this one, uh, um, I mean, that should tell the states, you know. So the boat ramp, um, even on four, shows relocation. Was that boat ramp there before when the, that bridge was there? Yeah, yeah the mm -hmm. boat ramp's been there, but it's, I mean, it's changed a little over the years. Ron, you... You born and raised over there. The boat ramp has been there since 1919. Yeah. It was never designed. It was never considered by any. It was just what works. Mm -hmm. And yep. as we went from 1942, Pontiacs towing a little boat <laughs> no, up to boat what we have to today, mm -hmm. you need a different kind of ramp. Yep. Right. You know. So it's more so of the, it, the, change the size and changes of the yep. boats and mm -hmm. what's required to maneuver them. Yep. Okay. I do know he knows the property extremely well because it was his family's at one point in time. Born and raised there. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Chief, you got any comments? I had to step out of the room for a minute. Well, I know, but I mean, you've been around for... Uh, again, if alternative four is the one that gives you the height that goes back to where it was, yep. and alternative four is the least amount of impact residents in the area and the least amount of impact to the road. It still allows us to figure out what we need to figure out, police yep. boat wise and emergency boat wise. And that's what's already budgeted as alternative four. Then to me that's the alternative that I would be the one. Mm. If yep. you, if you're asking me my opinion, alternative four is the option to look at the hardest. Yep. Obviously the seven foot, seven and a half foot to match the P D boat isn't something that's going to be economically feasible to either community. And the impact to all of the residents on that road is not going to be the most appropriate. Yes, there are going to be a lot of residents that would love if you match the height of the PD boat to drive underneath there and they wouldn't have to drop the tops on their pontoon boats or their ski boats or anything else. Of course. Yep. Um, but the financial impact at both communities is going to be astronomical as well as the road change. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think the road change to match that 7 foot 6 is going to be feasible. So. Yeah. Um, option four seems the best one. Yeah. Paul, just go around a little bit. You agree? Yep. Well, your your boat clearance is, is the primary concern for you. Yep. Yep. Okay. Chip, all set. Yeah, looks like four. Andy, four. Lenny, yeah. Bruce, all set with that. And Chris. Yeah, I I mean move if forward I would that direction. Letter today, I would you know draft it around that while we find alternative five as the um, preferred because of the things that it meets, um, I would like to see the cost of the Pony Trust if it was $50,000 less than the girder, maybe that's the way I'd go. But, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think if I heard you earlier, you didn't necessarily want us to, you wanted us to say, okay, yeah, one's yeah. set, Alternative six, no, but we like this one or this one. In other words, a range of three and four. Uh, I, I was going to suggest looking at both three and four as yeah. well, just yep. because you know three might be um, more impactful. It also also be much less cost because it is a single span. And there's the the issue of design exceptions. That's something that the towns where they they only maintain the road, you know, fire and police. Mm -hmm. Those are primary concerns of of. of design speed and the sight distance and those are things that can help reduce the grade but it also right. introduces things like lighting if you get too big of a design exception um, but those are things to consider mm -hmm. if, you, if clearance is your number one issue and cost is your second issue mm -hmm. design clearance and looking at those options can help I'll give you clearance and cost Right. I was, I was really keys because of what we had agreed to in the delay. So, but yes, three and four would make sense to look at those options. And what are your opinions on design exceptions, reducing the speed from thirty to fifteen? That, to to yes. I think we we ought to understand what the options are so that you can lower the grade if possible by reducing the speed. 
Sure. And we ought to understand what those alternatives are for the area. And, I don't and think anyone in that area is going to complain if you had to slow the speed down a little. Mm -hmm. Well, it's and a matter of enforcement and negotiation as well. Yeah, but, well, again, that's not going to be somebody do. sitting there, but... You know, they come down through the sag and come up, and they, they can't even see quick enough for someone yeah. coming across. It's, it's, yeah. it's a concern. No matter what your grade is, that's going to be an issue. So I would ask you as a board not to build anything to a grade less than what the road is built for the speed. Mm -hmm. So if the speed limit we're posting that road for is 30 miles an hour, then that's what we yep. build the grade. That would be option four more than yeah. the grade speed limit to that road. Mm -hmm. That corner for people when the bridge was there, the only reason people slowed down was because it was the wooden bridge. It was a little more narrow. When you hit the bridge, you felt it under your car. Mm -hmm. If you weren't normal to the area, you didn't feel all that safe driving across the wooden bridge. So you slowed down on purpose. Anybody that's driven that road, either coming in from the Lebanon side or coming in from the Milton side, that sweeping corner on the Milton side, you have no si no sight lines. Mm -hmm. Coming from the Lebanon side, you're coming straight down a hill and then coming and back, back up once again. You hit the bridge. So yep. you're losing traction, even going at 30 miles an hour hitting that bridge because mm -hmm. of the way your shocks are absorbing everything. Mm -hmm. yep. If we're going to decrease and build the bridge to 15 mile an hour grades, just so we can save a little bit of money, you're going to spend a whole lot more money later on in my time out there, the fire department's time out there, the York County Sheriff's Department's time, and the Lebanon Fire Department's time out there cleaning up the messes that are going to be left. Okay. I mean, that's our feeling. That's why we went with the more yep. the, the safer alternatives. But where the comment was brought up for design acceptance, we wanted to make sure that officials well, appreciate that. Jump in Absolutely. That. Um, the road, the designs as proposed tonight, don't all meet 30. They do to the best they can. They meet existing grades. Um, like the existing horizontal curve in New Hampshire meets a 25 mile an hour speed. The intent is not to make it worse than it is today. No, I, and I understand that. Okay. And I know that before, with the like I said, with the old bridge, that right. bridge wasn't built for a 30 mile an hour road. Right. It was right. built for people going probably right. five or 10 miles an hour. So it might, there um, might still be an exception required, but it won't. It wouldn't be for designed for less than what it is today. Right. And, and typically, as kind of just a, a general rule of thought, um, at least on Maine and I think in New Hampshire side as well, is most design exceptions that are handled at like department level that don't need to go to federal highway or whatever it's typically only five under the speed limit that we look at as a max just because the differential between them it just throws your car around mm -hmm. so usually it's you know it's a lower speed you know you could look at the posted speed limit through here and do a speed study or whatever is required for using federal dollars on a project um, those are things that can be looked at. It's just some of it takes a little bit of time, but I, I absolutely agree. You know, you don't want to go crazy just to try to fit something in here, you know, to get something out in the middle of the bridge. You know, there's some folks that say, oh, we got that roller coaster bridge out on so-and-so road, and you can get boats through. Well, you know, then you, you know, you're having major accidents <coughs> because people think it's fun to get air off of it when they go across it. You know, there, there's so many things to take into consideration. Um, you know, we want to focus on what's in, important in what tops the list as best as we can knowing that it's never going to be perfect with how tough the alignment is out there um, so uh, you know, the five is kind of something to take into consideration it's, it's it's hard to go more than that without really feeling it as you're driving we have done a, a, a speed study on that road recently probably in the past three years and a traffic study when all, all to, uh, to do with the campground so that there is studies out there, recent studies. Um, but to pick, piggyback on what Bruce said, we have to take his comments into consideration um, about um, the 24 foot spans um, because, you know, we could save a ton of revenue if we could go to 20 feet. And, you know, potentially, you know, you're going to be going into people's property too. Um, so that's something to consider. That was going to be my question. The reason they went to the two feet was for people. Yeah, crossing typically the bridge. 24 is our minimum for anything that has pedestrians in the area, and that's that's why the state minimums are typically 24 because it accommodates everything, you know, from baseline vehicles, but including, you know, pedestrian and bicycle. 
10 feet is really tight for that. Mm -hmm. You know, 10 and ones is what a lot of some of these older structures were. This one had a sidewalk, so obviously everybody knows the roadway was a lot more narrow, but it had that protected space, even if it wasn't ADA five feet, mm -hmm. you know, it was something that was out of traffic. So my guess is that's probably where the 24 actually came from was, you know, trying to allow some sort of pedestrian across there. And I guess feel from you folks, you know, how important is that um, for the area? You put it back in, people are going to use it. Mm -hmm. um, so we could certainly taper the 24 back down to 20, maybe sooner, you know, more quickly than it shows. But, you know, the bridge, you put it in there, the, you know, theoretically it's there for 75 to 100 years. You know, you, you want to try to facilitate what that average use is over that entire lifespan. So, you know, they kind of generalized it and, and kept it through and tapered back once they got past the grade change because right, you st you're still dealing with that grade change in that area. So if you're dealing with that, maybe you can save a little bit, but as you taper, you still have big impacts with that large of a grade change. So, you know, yes, you could probably save a little bit by narrowing the road up, but you're still impacting the same properties almost the same amount. So that's probably why it was, you know, kept mostly 24. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any last comments from the boards? Thank you for your time tonight. We really appreciate that, mm -hmm. and uh, look forward to the next uh, next session. Thank you. And uh, with that in mind, that ends. Uh, so, well, good, Matt. One point of information for all in attendance, all in viewing. This is my information, phone number, email. Any comments and concerns? Send them. Could you send us? Just send Chris the presentation, and then we can share that. Yeah, and likely we'll be posting. We can set that up on our website as well. Yeah. Um, so always taking public comment yep. because the more information we have, the better we can advise. Well, I know you've everybody. answered a few people here locally Just recently, Just so no, I appreciate that. Man. Thank you. So, in any questions, let us know. Okay. So to, to be clear, we're going to advance options three, three and four. four. Yes. Let you know what the impacts. And I'll draft a letter that uh, yep. share with. Uh, Thank you very much. That, you know, okay. And when you get the presentation, presentation if you could get it. Yeah, I'll make sure that yeah. you guys get that. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. All right, that ends our public meeting. We're going to be entering into a non-public. Thank you.